While the Russian forces were still trying to realize what was happening, four Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. The laser-guided Hellfire missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out something that came up on my radar a few weeks ago when this got sent to me. Now, this is from a YouTube channel I'm not familiar with. It's called Brothers in Arms. But this is also a story that I haven't heard about. And I imagine I probably would have like seen some memes or something on like Facebook or whatnot. But yeah, it's not a story that I'm familiar with, but it's it's an interesting one. I mean, the title is How U.S. Military Smoked Russian Mercenaries. So I imagine this is probably going to have to do with like Syria, because when you're talking about like the U.S. military and the Russians being in like some geographical location like together, uh, it's probably going to be Syria. At least that's what I can imagine. So I don't know the backstory too much. I imagine this video is going to kind of cover everything we'd need to know. I don't know, but I'm always like curious and it'd be cool if we can get like an interview from somebody who was there. But if it is Syria, then it's probably going to be some like special operations guys as well. And they're probably not going to be doing any interviews on YouTube. But if you guys have any more details or backstory that's not included in this video, definitely throw it down below so I can check that out as well. But it should be a good one. Let's check it out. When the first vehicle in the convoy suddenly blew up, the Russian mercenaries knew something was wrong. A little C-130 action. objective, to capture an oil field in eastern Syria, was supposed to be a routine mission. The enemy, they knew by then, would have fled long ago at the sight of 500 battle-hardened Russian and Syrian fighters. Damn, 500? But instead, the attack had come to an abrupt halt, An explosion after explosion shook the ground. It wasn't long before AC-130 gunships, Dude. Predator drones, Apache helicopters, and fighter jets were circling over the battlefield, pounding the attackers from every imaginable angle. Yeah, so I would imagine they probably learned pretty quick like who they were dealing with. I mean, one, they're probably used to seeing all that equipment in general, like operating side by side. You see a lot of videos where the Americans and Russians get really kind of close to each other, like convoys, like basically mad maxing each other which is pretty interesting to watch as well but yeah i imagine they kind of knew what the u.s was working with in the area but yeah when you go and you're not really expecting a whole lot of resistance and then all of a sudden your convoy just starts getting like smacked by a fixed wing yeah it's probably going to put you in a bit of a fog hackers from every imaginable angle what the russian forces didn't know was that the oil field was not defended by any fighters but by american special operations forces supported by the most powerful air force in the world and so yeah. within a few minutes the routine mission turned into hell on earth and into one of the deadliest engagements for the notorious russian mercenary group wagner oh, to man. stop the rapid advance of the self i also wonder what the americans were thinking like they probably got some general intel, especially if it was like 500 fighters. They probably got some intel that there was some troop movement coming in the area. But holy cow, they'd be like, what the heck? The Ru the Russians are attacking us? Like, are they trying to start, start World War Three or something? Um, but I imagine they also kind of knew they were being pretty low-key in that area. Claimed Islamic State, the U.S. had deployed troops in Syria since 2014. They supported the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF. A year later, Russia also intervened in the fight against ISIS, but on the side of Assad's Syrian government forces. The SDF and the Syrian army were never seen as allies, but in keeping with the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, <laughs> both parties at least mostly avoided each other. Okay. After years of fighting, both armies managed to drive out the terrorists, and by 2018, ISIS held only a fraction of its original bases. Hmm. To Word. prevent an unintended conflict between Russian and U.S. supported armies, a deconfliction line was formed along the Euphrates River, which effectively bisects Syria. In hmm. addition, okay. both Didn't parties were able to contact each other through special telephone channels that were kept clear at any time. But despite all these precautions, on February hmm. 7th, just a few miles from the Euphrates River, the first deadly clash between Russians and Americans since the Cold War occurred. Yeah, I'm really curious what the casualties actually look like. When you're talking about like fixed wing and AC-130s, like the armament especially, the armament alone is pretty freaking intense. Uh, but again, like those munitions, some of those munitions, especially from like certain fixed wing, are pretty freaking precise too. So yeah, if it's a convoy, also again, it's probably like a linear sort of target. So I don't know. I'm curious to see how many actually came out of this unscathed. 7th, 2018. 500 Russian and Syrian fighters attacked an SDF military base. The base was located about five miles east of the Euphrates River and mm. controlled one of the country's main oil fields. 
Thus, like most oil fields, the area was officially on the Syrian democratic side of the ceasefire line. But this did not stop the Syrian-Russian troops in any way. The hmm. attackers were supported by various Russian-made battle tanks, as well as mortars, artillery, and rocket launchers, with which okay. they began shelling the SDF base without warning. Damn. In addition, Russian Air Force aircraft were on standby to provide air support, but initially remained on the ground. However, while everything was initially going according to plan for the attacking forces, the phone suddenly rang in the Russian headquarters near the Euphrates. A representative of the U.S. military was on the line and wanted to know whether Russian fighters were currently trying to take the military base at the Conoco oil fields. No. Here, not only the Syrian Democratic Forces were under heavy artillery fire, but also their allies, American Green Berets, Army Rangers, Marines, and various support units. Damn, okay. After the Russians had explicitly denied the question whether the enemy were their troops, it was hey. clear to the caller. Game Whoever on. Whoever was currently taking fire at his soldiers he would feel the full force of the American military in just a few moments. Sheesh. The response <laughs> to the attack on their military base was prompt and tremendous. Even right, before the Russian it. convoy reached its starting position for the attack, the first and last vehicles were taken out. And a <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, before they, they even reached their SP point, they didn't even... So I, I get it. Yeah, you want to kind of like soften the, the objective with indirect fire, but... When you guys haven't even like remotely got close to crossing that LD, that line of departure, <laughs> I don't know. It seems a little bit weird. I'm not like an expert in convoy ops. I didn't really do a whole lot myself, mostly light infantry stuff, but it does seem kind of odd. That's pretty freaking gnarly though. They are immediately started targeting their, their first and last vehicles, they said. Classic ambush maneuver, trapping yeah. the forces in the middle. Making that kill zone, the missiles yeah. came from an American Reaper drone, which had been targeting the convoy for some time. Oh man, However, yeah, to the of course. Russian Wagner mercenaries on the ground, the drone was invisible, and they had a hard time understanding where the fire suddenly like, came from. Bro, what is going it on? It didn't take long for more shells to hit, spreading chaos on the battlefield. American artillery and High Mars rocket launchers engaged Ooh, the convoy, Mars? inflicting Damn. numerous casualties. While the Russian forces were still trying to realize what was happening, four Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. Although the Bro. gunships were several miles away. Okay, so yeah, the drone is definitely gonna hit him with that surprise for sure. But dude, that that high Mars is just gonna be like shock and awe. And then you just see these freaking Apache gunships just coming over the horizon. Yeah, and then at that point you're like, oh, dude, it's it's looking bad for us. And I imagine they're probably gonna radio it up and be like, yo, can we like get some support? Can you try and call them or what? And they're. Yeah, they're just not answering at that point. Several miles away, no one could hide from their precise infrared optics. The laser-guided Hellfire missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks, while the 30-millimeter cannon forced the enemy infantry to withdraw. Few of them withdraw, were able yeah. to escape the explosive shells, and a Russian survivor later reported that they suffered about 200 casualties within the first few minutes, almost Whoa. half of the entire attack force. Damn. The reports that are on TV about, well, scary. you know, about Syria and the 25 people that are wounded there from the Syrian army. And well, to make it short, we've had our kicked. So one squadron lost 200 people. Right away, another one lost 10 people. And I don't know about the third squadron, but it got torn up pretty badly too. Bro. So three squadrons took a beating. Gnarly. The Yankees attacked. First, they blasted the Yankees. out of us by artillery. And then they took four helicopters up and pushed us in a merry-go-round with <laughs> machine guns. What a way to describe it. They were all it. shelling the holy out of it. And our guys didn't have anything besides the assault rifles. Nothing at all. Not even mentioning shoulder-fired SAMs or anything like that. Jeez. So they tore us to pieces for sure. Put us through hell. And the Yankees... I want to know where they got this quote from. It's something that you would like find on, on Reddit or something like a, an, an AMA of some dude who just survived this crazy thing because there was a big lack of communication. He knew for sure that the Russians were coming, that it was us, Russians. Our guys were coming to commandeer an oil refinery and the commandeer. Yankees were holding it. We got our beat rough. My men called me. They're there drinking now. Many have gone missing. It was a total Sucks. Another There's gun AWOL. While AC-130 gunships circled over the battlefield engaging Dude, that's individual thing. targets, large B-52 strategic bombers completely destroyed the convoy. 
Dude, what? Those who managed to escape hit B-52s as well? But even there, they were not safe for long. I mean, I know they can be strategic targets, but like, dude, that is a lot to respond to one oil refinery. <laughs> I mean, I wonder like what the actual time frame we're working with is because like it seemed right away or within two minutes you had already some effects happening on the convoy. But if the Predator drones were kind of watching it already, then you probably had a lot of these aircraft already in the air by the time the convoy was kind of within range. But dude... <laughs> Yeah, they definitely couldn't have predicted that show for us. The night, the attackers were hunted by F-15 fighter At jets night. whose bombs penetrated even the best cover. The new fifth-generation air superiority fighter F-22 Raptor was also used. So but for cool. the soldiers on the ground, it no longer made any difference who was pounding them. The Russian contractors did not stand a chance yeah, against the American Air Force. Pounding them the hardest, I Although think. Although there were rumors that some pilots from the nearby Russian air base were asking for permission to take off, the blue-painted Su-34s and 35s remained on the ground. The hmm. attackers' casualties were so heavy that in the middle of the battle, one of the Russian commanders called in and asked for a ceasefire, indicating that Russian military was in contact <laughs> with the attacking fighters. <laughs> then they got enough calls for them like, hey... All right, we know what we said before, but bro, you guys need to chill. Like, it's nighttime and you're still hitting them? Like, bro. A published call That's from crazy. a Wagner mercenary sums up events in Syria. Just had a call with a guy. So they basically formed a convoy, but didn't get to their positions by some 300 meters. One unit moved forward. The convoy remained in place about 300 meters from the others. The others raised the American flag, and their artillery started f***ing ours really hard. And their <laughs> Damn. choppers flew in and started f***ing everybody. Ours just running around. Just got a call from a pal, so they're about 215 f***ing killed. Jeez. They simply rolled ours out f***ing hard. Made their point. What the f*** ours <laughs> were hoping for in there? That they'll f***ing <laughs> run away themselves? Hope to f***ing scare them away? Lots of people f***ing so bad they can't be f***ing ID'd. Damn. There were no foot soldiers on the American side. They simply f***ed our convoy with Well, yeah, they're like, damn, no need by the sounds of all the other stuff they brought to the fight. Yeah, I mean, you can tell this guy's kind of pissed off just by the amount of F-bombs he's, he's throwing here. I mean, yeah, again, when you're not really expecting it and your dudes are calling you up, they're like, yo, this just happened? I don't know about this anymore, Artillery. dude. When the battle ended early next morning, there was nothing left of the convoy of vehicles. All combat vehicles have been destroyed, with the exception of a single battle of death. armored personnel carrier. Of approximately 500 Russian and Syrian attackers, at least 200 were killed or wounded. One of the mercenaries later reported that in some places they found solidified melted sand and gun barrels bent from the heat. Bro. There were no casualties on the American side, and no a reports of damaged or aircraft. Something. Only one of the SDF soldiers in the base at the oil field was wounded by Russian fire, but survived. Hmm. The incident sparked outrage on both Russian and Syrian sides, but since the Americans had repeatedly reassured themselves through the Russian officials, they <laughs> could not be blamed. <laughs> yeah. According to intercepted True. phone calls between the leader of Wagner and Russian ministers, the attack was even said to be an order from Moscow. For Wagner Group fighters, the Battle of Conoco Fields went down in history as Red February and was one of their most mm. humiliating engagements. Jeez. At least some of them. I don't know if it's like an intelligence failure on their parts or like a good OPSEC win on the Americans' part that they didn't actually even know they were there. But yeah, I mean, I guess they didn't really want to do the coordination beforehand to try and figure out if there were any Americans there. They received a medal specially made for this event. It shows a Russian soldier surrounded by flames, heroically shooting at an American Apache helicopter. What? No kidding. Is this real? First of all, that's like a pretty badass looking medal. Um, but bro, like I don't even I wouldn't even want to like wear that. That would just like trigger all the PTSD. They literally have like an image of everything that went down. That seems pretty pretty bizarre. Again, it looks like cool. I've never seen a medal that like depicted the actual firefight. I mean, I've never seen a medal for a specific firefight like this, but that's so bizarre. A scene that probably never took place in this way. 
The Syrian Democratic Forces and their American allies had successfully defended the base at the oil field and continued to fortify it. Hmm. The demonstration of their superior air power was meant to be a warning to any hostile forces not Jeez. to mess with the wrong people. Interestingly, yeah, no when kidding. Syrian and Russian fighters gathered in the area again about a month later, the Americans once more contacted the Russian commander in charge. This time, it was not long after the end of the phone call that the entire Russian-Syrian fighting force hastily withdrew. <laughs> okay. For those yeah, who made it this sense. far, thanks for watching. If you want to help us produce more content, feel free Ooh. to leave a like and tell us what you think of the attack on the U.S. base. Okay, I'll do Did that right now. Did the Russian military know it was their own mercenaries and deliberately sent them to their deaths? Or is it just I guess another it big misunderstanding due to the really didn't know they were Americans there. Whatever you think, we're eager to hear your opinion. What is this? This looks pretty cool. Is that real? All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave that like. Yeah, of course, I'll put the original video down in the description so you guys can check that out. But yeah, that was really well put together. Um, I know, you know, you don't always have clips from these attacks. Uh, but it is cool that he was able to get like the quotes and whatnot from people who kind of experienced it or had their buddies experience it. And of course the other clips like the predator footage and stuff kind of helps a little bit with the immersion. But yeah, pretty pretty well done, I gotta say. And yeah, this isn't a story that I heard about. Even like going through everything, yeah, I don't think I've, I've heard about this previously. Especially with it being the, the Wagners. I don't know, I figured I would have come up a little bit more now since you know they've been a little bit more engaged in the in the war in Ukraine. But okay, interesting story. Of course, I'm going to try and scrub this channel to see if there's any other cool content to check out. And of course, I might not react to it, but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff out there that I end up watching anyway, just because it's like so interesting. But of course, if you guys have anything to recommend for me to react to, you can throw it down below and I'll try and check it out. But this was a good one. If you guys have any other cool stories like this, let me know. These like kind of like one-off random stories where you have either like a big miscommunication or just some really bad judgment. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see how it like breaks down time-wise and chronologically. But yeah, this person did some pretty solid research, so I appreciate that as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed, of course. If you have anything to recommend, anything to comment, you can throw it down below. And of course, if you guys liked the video, definitely consider liking the video. It helps me out. And commenting in general kind of helps me out with that YouTube algorithm as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.